Welcome to the next section, data serialization, deserialization, and parsing. Here we'll look at how to handle data once we receive it in a server or a client using a number of serialization slash deserialization methods in the Rust ecosystem. Now we move to the first video, serialization and deserialization using Serdi. Here we'll start with basic usage and then move on to writing custom serializers using Serdi. Serdi is the de facto standard way of serializing and deserializing data in Rust. Serdi supports a number of data structures that it can serialize out of the box to a number of given data formats, including JSON, TOML, and CSV. The easiest way to understand Serdi is to think of it as an invertible function that transforms the given data structure into a stream of bytes. Other than standard data types, Serdi also provides a few macros that can be implemented on user-defined data types, making them deserializable. In section two, introduction to Rust and its ecosystem, we discussed how procedural macros can be used to implement custom derives for a given data type. Serdi uses that mechanism to provide two custom derives, named serialize and deserialize, that can be implemented for user-defined data types that are composed of data types that Serdi supports. Let's look at a small example of how this works. We'll start by creating the empty project using Cargo. By executing this command, we've created a binary application that is Serdi Basics project. Let's open the file. Here's what the Cargo manifest should look like. Then we need to add these dependencies. The Serdi crate is the core of the Serdi ecosystem. The Serdi underscore derive crate provides necessary instrumentation that uses procedural macros for deriving serialize and deserialize. The next two crates provide Serdi specific functionality to and from JSON and YAML respectively. Save the file and exit from the project. Then we'll move to our main file and open it. We'll replace the existing code with this block of code. Let's understand the function and significance of it. Since the Serdi underscore derive crate exports macros, we'll need to mark it with a macro underscore use declaration. We'll then declare all our dependencies as extern crates. Having set this up, we'll define our custom data type with this code snippet. In this case, we're interested in a config for a server that has a bunch of parameters of different types. The auth underscore server parameter is optional, and that's why it's wrapped in an option. Our struct derives the two traits from Serdi, and also the compiler provided debug trait, that we'll later use to display after deserialization. In our main function, we'll instantiate our class and call to string function from the serdi underscore yaml to serialize it to a string. The reverse of this is serdi underscore yaml from underscore string. Let's save this file and exit from the project. Next, we'll compile serdi basic. We'll execute a cargo run. A sample run will look like this, as you can see here. It may take some time, so we'll wait patiently. Finally, you can see that the compilation is done and it gives you the summary of the project. Further, let's move on to a more advanced example of using Serdi over a network. In this example, we'll set up a TCP server and a client. This part will be exactly the same as how we did it in the last section, but this time our TCP server will function as a calculator that takes in a point in a 3D space with three components along the three axes and returns its distance from the origin in the same reference frame. Let's set up our cargo project. First, we'll exit from the previous project and create another project using the cargo command. Then to observe the manifest, we'll enter the Serdi server project and open the cargo TLML file. The manifest will look like this. Here, we'll add a few dependencies. We'll be using these dependencies in the program. For now, save this TOML file and open the main.rs file. With this, we'll move on to define our code. In this example, the server and the client will be in the same binary. The application will take in a flag that dictates whether it should run as the server or the client. We'll start with setting up Serdi as shown here. Then we define our 3D point as a struct of three elements. It's time to add code in the function. This function handles a single client. In our main function, we handle CLI arguments and branch out to the client or the server, depending on what was passed. 
In both cases, we signal the end of transmission by sending a new line character. After that, we'll add the code snippet to define the client case. The client reads a line from STD in, cleans it, and creates an instance of the struct in a loop. In both cases, we wrap our streams in a buff reader for easier handling. Save the file and exit from main.rs file. Now, let's try to compile server case using the cargo. Once it's done, we'll get to see that the message of incoming connection from this server. Let's also run the client case. And on the client side, we'll see this interaction with the server. As expected, the client reads input, serializes that, and sends it to the server. Then it will wait for a response, and when it gets one, prints the result to standard output. As you can see, it will ask for the 3D response. Let's provide integers 1, 2, 3. The response is displayed as an output. Make an attempt with different set integers and view the responses. Proceeding with custom serialization and deserialization. As we saw before, SERDI provides built in serialization and deserialization for all primitive data types and a number of complex data types via macros. In some cases, however, SERDI might fail to auto implement. This might happen for more complex data types. In those cases, you'll need to implement these manually. These cases demonstrate advanced usage of SERDI, which also allows renaming fields in the output. Let's say we have a struct of three fields. We'll just assume that SERDI fails to implement serialize and deserialize on this, and so we'll need to implement those manually. Move to the path before initializing the project using cargo. After that, we'll open SERDI custom file in the nano editor. Here we'll declare our dependencies. The resulting cargo config file will look like this. Further, we'll navigate to the source directory and open the min.rs file. In this file, we'll replace the existing code with this new block of code. After adding the code, our struct will look like this. We'll need to derive debug and partial EQ for SERDI to use internally. In the real world, it might be necessary to manually implement those as well. Now we'll need to implement the serialized trait for cube config. This trait looks like this. The basic workflow for serializing our struct will simply be to serialize the struct name, then each of the elements, and then signal the end of serialization in that order. SERDI has built-in methods to serialize that can work with all basic types. Therefore, an implementation does not need to worry about handling built-in types. Let's look at how we can serialize our struct. Serialization of a struct will always begin with a call to serialize struct with the struct name and number of fields as parameter. There are similarly named methods for other types. We then serialize each field in the order they appear while passing a key name that will be used in the resultant JSON. Once done, we'll call the special end method as a signal. Implementing deserialization is a bit more involved with a bit of boilerplate code. Implementing this for a type requires implementing the visitor pattern. SERDI defines a special visitor trait as shown in this example. Note that this has visit methods for all built-in types. Those are not shown here. Also in this sample, we use this symbol to indicate that there are more methods here that are not important for our discussion. An implementation of this trait is used internally by the deserializer to construct the resultant type. In our case, it will look like this. Now, the input to the deserializer is JSON, which can be treated as a map. Thus, we only need to implement visit underscore map from the visitor trait. Most of the previous implementation is boilerplate. Let's add another code snippet in the main.rs file. It boils down to a few parts, implementing visitor for the fields and implementing visit underscore string, since all of our fields are strings. At this point, we should be able to deserialize individual fields. The second part is to implement visitor for the overall struct and to implement visit underscore map. Errors must be handled appropriately in all cases. In the end, we'll call deserializer.deserialize underscore struct and pass the name of the struct, the list of fields, and the visitor implementation for the whole struct. The whole implementation will look like this. 
Serdi also provides a crate that can be used to unit test custom serializers and deserializers using a token stream-like interface. To use it, we'll need to add Serdi test to our cargo.toml and declare it as an extern crate in our main file. Here's a test for our deserializer. The assert D tokens call checks if the given stream of tokens deserializes to our struct or not, thereby testing our deserializer. We can also add a main function to drive the serializer with these few lines of code. All this can now be run using Cargo. Let's run the test, once coming back to the root. Using Cargo test will run the test that we just wrote, which should pass. As you can see, it gives the test result as OK and test passed count as 1. Lastly, we'll execute Cargo run that will run the main function and print the serialized JSON. You can see that it displays the desired result. That's all about serialization and deserialization.